Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. We're talking about history today and the truth behind two different colors, pink and blue,、uh, and their stereotypes. When I grew up, most guys wouldn't even wear pink. There was no way they would put on pink. Nowadays, I think a lot more guys will wear pink shirts. At least I think guys look really cute in pink. But when I was growing up, boys were only supposed to wear blue. Yep,、uh, blue and pink, right? So the title of today's article is "The Truth Behind Blue and Pink's Color Stereotypes." And again, the stereotypes are that、uh, boys are supposed to wear blue,、yeah. and girls are supposed to wear pink, and you don't mix those around. Those are the stereotypes that we're talking about today. But、uh, as Stephanie said,、uh, things have changed a bit, but still, you mostly see girls wearing pink and guys wearing blue. So let's get to it, everybody. Let's read. The entire contents of today's lesson and find out what this is all about. Look around in any children's clothing store, and you're sure to see shiny pink princess dresses and blue superhero T-shirts. This site emphasizes the idea that pink is for girls and blue is for boys. Centuries ago, however. Pink and blue had no stronger association with gender than any other color. Considering this, you can't help but wonder when this view changed and why. Using blue and pink as signifiers of gender began in the 1890s. At that time, American companies began advertising the colors in that way to sell more clothes. However, ideas about which color was masculine and which was feminine. Weren't consistent for decades. In the 1920s, fashion brand Marshall Fields called pink a boy's color, while Macy's branded it for girls. One event that clarified the idea that pink was a girly color and blue was for boys occurred in 1922. This was the well-known sale of the classic painting *The Blue Boy* to millionaire Henry Huntington. This artwork depicts a young boy handsomely dressed in blue. In his famous art collection, Huntington hung this piece next to a painting of a girl dressed in pink called Pinky. Later, these artworks commonly appeared in the popular American TV show Leave It to Beaver, helping make the color stereotypes popular. Recently, researchers have found that more and more men are wearing pink. One reason for this is that the younger generation simply doesn't have some of the prejudices about certain colors that perhaps the fathers and grandfathers do, reports academic Joe Pauletti. This modern attitude reflects the belief that a color is just that—a hue rather than a gender statement. We're going to talk about some color stereotypes today. And where we came up with them, where they came from, how long we've had these stereotypes. Stereotypes is they're usually just how someone thinks about something. It's usually widely thought of that way. It's oversimplified, of course. For example, women are bad drivers. That is a stereotype. I'm a great driver, but I do have a little sister that could kill you if you're on the road with her. But stereotypes are easy ways to just. You know, sort out what something is like or what somebody is like without really getting to know the individual. So, where do we get these pink and blue stereotypes that girls have to wear pink and boys can wear blue, but they can't wear pink because that's girly? I love blue too. I like both colors. We're gonna look around in any children's clothing store, and if you do that, you're sure to see shiny pink princess dresses and blue superhero T-shirts. Um, I think what's interesting about the stereotype, though, Tom, is that、yeah. girls wear blue too, but the guys, you're kind of just, you know, stuck with blue only if well, you believe in this. Stereotype. I was going to say more. We're kind of stuck with black or white or gray.、Uh, if you look at some of the color choices for, say, polo shirts or something like that, we don't really get many of the bright colors that the girls get. We get rather dull, kind of conservative colors and things like that. But、uh, this is what's going to happen if you're in a children's clothing store. 
You'll see shiny pink dresses, and then superhero T-shirts that will be blue, like for Superman or something like that. Now, this site in a children's clothing store emphasizes the idea that pink is for girls. And blue is for boys. Now, again, this is from an American perspective, or at least a Western perspective. I don't know if you have the same idea here in Taiwan that pink is for girls and blue is for boys. Although maybe what about maybe ten or twenty years ago, I once went to work wearing a pink T-shirt, and a girl there complimented me. She said, "Hey." Guys in Taiwan never wear pink, so it's pretty cool that you're wearing pink today. So maybe that stereotype is true in Taiwan, or at least it was then. I don't know, but in any case, the stereotype is, or the idea is, that pink is for the girls and blue is for boys. So this site does go ahead and emphasize this stereotype: pink for girls, blue for boys. Centuries ago. A century is a hundred years, so hundreds of years ago. However, pink and blue had no stronger association with gender than any other color, meaning they weren't restricted. Pink wasn't restricted to girls, and blue wasn't restricted to boys. Anybody could wear those colors long ago, hundreds of years ago. When you talk about an association, you're talking about two or more things being linked together, connected in some way. I belong to a journalism association because I studied journalism in college. So, an association can also be a group of people who are organized for a, a specific purpose. But here we're talking about a connection, a link. So there's no stronger link or connection with gender. Gender meaning、uh, the sex of a guy or girl. So gender would be male, female. There's no stronger link with、uh, gender than any other color. This was long ago. But nowadays there really is more of an emphasis. That、uh, pink should be on girls and blue should be on boys. Well, blue for girls too. I have a lot of blue clothes. Uh, yeah, like I said before, girls get to wear any color they want to, basically. Pretty much, yeah.、Uh, guys have to wear more moderate colors. But in any case, here considering this, you can't help but wonder when this view changed. And why? So when you consider the fact that、uh, pink and blue did not have any gender associations centuries ago,、mm. then you can't help think, hey, why did this change? Why do we associate pink with women and blue with men? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, here in the next paragraph, it says. Using blue and pink as signifiers of gender、hmm. began way back in the 1890s. So here we've got the word signifier.、Uh, that's from the verb to signify, which means to indicate or to show or to let us know that something is the case. So yes, pink meant. The, the female gender. When did it signify that, or when did it stand for that?、Uh, when did pink signify female, and when did blue signify male? Well, that began way back in the 1890s, just before the turn of the century. There, maybe about what、uh, 15 years before World War One started, and at that time, American companies began advertising the colors in that way to sell more clothes. So yes, it all has to do with corporations and companies. Here, they would. Advertise these colors in that way. So here we've got the verb to advertise. When you want to sell a product or a service, you advertise that product or service, and you can advertise on television, on the internet, on billboards, on radio, etc., etc. To advertise is the verb, and advertisement is actually the noun, the thing that you see in a newspaper or magazine. But it says here. However, ideas about which color was masculine and which was feminine wasn't consistent for decades. So it kept changing, even though it started in the 1890s. Things were going back and forth for a couple of decades. A decade is ten years. So for for quite a while, if something's described as being masculine or a guy is described as being masculine. Just means this thing or person has qualities or appearances that are usually or traditionally associated with men. The opposite of masculine is feminine, and of course, if you're described as being feminine, then you have qualities that are usually associated with females, with、uh, women. So they weren't really consistent for quite a while, but in the 1920s, 
fashion brand Marshall Fields called pink a boys' color, while Macy's branded it for girls. So I guess they were still kind of fighting it out back in the 1920s. That's interesting. Marshall Field was a fashion brand.、Uh, they're not so popular these days, but they decided that pink was a boys' color. And Macy's, of course, Macy's department store is still there. It branded it or said, "No, pink is for girls. You're wrong." Interesting. So they had、uh, different ideas about which color signified which gender.、Uh, pink was for boys, at least according to Marshall Field, and blue was for girls, according to Macy's. Now, in the next paragraph here, it says one event that clarified the idea that pink was a girly color. And blue was for boys. Occurred in the year 1922, and this was the well-known sale of the classic painting, The Blue Boy, to millionaire Henry Huntington. And he bought this painting called the Blue Boy. I've seen that at some guy or some kid or some boy. Maybe what is about maybe thirteen or fourteen. I don't think he's that old. I would say he's more like six or seven. Oh, that young. The one、okay. I'm thinking of. We had a copy of this in my home when I was growing up. My mom loved this painting.、Okay. Uh, it's a kid, probably in the 1700s, maybe. Really cute. I wonder if you're thinking about the same painting. But Probably,、uh, yeah. yeah, it was well known. If you're well known, or something's well known, it's famous. People know about it, and sometimes these sales are are very well known because、uh, usually the paintings that are being sold are quite famous and expensive. So only millionaires nowadays usually can buy some of these famous paintings. So this was a famous painting sold to millionaire Henry Huntington. We're going to talk more about this and how things kind of changed in 1922. But first, guys, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, everyone. My name is Tina. 今天我们要谈论的主题是 color stereotypes， 也就是对于颜色的刻板印象。首先来看到第一个空格的句子提到 this side. Blank one. The idea that pink is for girls and blue is for boys. 看到这样的景象呢，怎么样？然后粉红色是女生，蓝色是男生的这样子的概念。第一题 A 选项 emphasizes 强调 ，B vanishes 消失 ，C replaces 取代 ，D。Memorizes 记忆，在这里呢，我们如果看到这样闪亮的粉红色公主连身裙跟蓝色的超级英雄 T 恤，你会发现这样的景象强调的就是粉红色是给女生，蓝色是给男生的这样概念。搭配文艺，第一题的标准答案，我们就选择 A。Emphasizes 第二个空格，这里的句子提到 ，Considering this。You can't help blank two when this view changed and why. 那么看到这些，考虑到这一点，你怎么样？这个见解什么时候有了改变？然后呢 ？Why 它是为什么会改变？我们要考考同学这个文法的观念。Can't help 后面呢可以加上 v i n g， 或者是 can't help but。加上原形动词，可以解释成为不经怎么样，不得不怎么样。所以看到这样的景象，考虑到这一点呢，你不禁会思考这个想法什么时候有了改变，而且为什么会改变。搭配句法，在这里我们可以选择 D 选项 ，but 后面加上。原形动词 wonder， 而在这里的 wonder 则是解释成为想知道的意思。接着第三个空格，这一句写着 ，However, ideas about which color was masculine and which was feminine weren't blanks three for decades. 其实呢，早在这个一八九零年代，数十年以来，关于哪一种颜色适合男性，哪一种女颜色适。和女性的这样的想法，并不是怎么样的。你前面跟后面的文艺会知道呢。有些人认为粉红色适合男生，有些人认为粉红色适合女生。搭配这样的文艺，我们来看一下第三题 A 选项 ：ambitious， 有野心的 ；B，imaginative， 丰富想象力的 ；C，consistent， 一致性的 ；D。
abstract 抽象的。有些人认为粉红色适合男生，有些人则认为粉红色适合女生，所以其实大家的想法是不太一致的。第三题搭配文艺，我们就选择 C consistent。第四个空格 ，In the 1920s, fashion brand Marshall Fields called pink a boy's color. Blank four, Macy's branded it for girls. 在一九二零年代呢，这个时尚品牌 Marshall Fields 百货公司，它就把粉红色视为是男生的颜色。相对照语词，我们在这里前后两个完整句子需要一个连接词，比照两者之间的差异。相较于此呢 ，Macy's 则是把粉红色把它认为是女生的颜色。所以在这里搭配文艺跟文法，第四题的标准答案。可以选择 B while 解释成为然而，用来比较两者之间的差异。其他的选项 A once 一旦 ，C until 直到 ，D because 因为都不是正确选项。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, everybody. Let's continue talking about pink and blue. Why is pink for girls, and why is blue for boys? And where we were just talking, or where we just left off, was when we were talking about the well-known painting, "The Blue Boy." It was sold to a millionaire by the name of Henry Huntington. He had money to burn. He had more money than he knew what to do with. So he thought, "Hey." I'm going to buy this painting, the Blue Boy. Okay, so when you buy a painting, of course, you want to show it off, right? Totally. So, of course, you put it on the wall here. And again, we did describe this artwork, this painting, as depicting a young boy handsomely dressed in blue. So, yes, indeed, if you've seen that painting before, indeed, he does look like a sharply dressed young boy. Wearing that blue outfit, myself, I wouldn't be caught dead dressed like that. <laughs> You'd probably be the target of hunters or something like Styles that. Styles were so different. You're right, Tom. He's older. I would say he's probably in his twenties. Oh, that yeah, okay. okay. The one, but my mom had a blue boy, but it was a little kid. So I'm thinking of a different painting. Maybe it was、uh, sort of、uh, based on the original blue boy painting. This blue boy painting, just so you guys know, is by Thomas Gainsborough. That's the That's artist. That's right. That's who painted it. And And I believe in that painting. I can't see it right now, but I think he's like holding a hat or something like that, down to his side or something. So, in any case, I have seen reproductions of that、yeah. painting, but I've never actually seen the original.、Uh, maybe you could go online and find out where the original is now. Maybe it's owned by、uh, Henry Huntington's、uh, ancestors, or by a museum. Who knows? So Not this, his ancestors,、uh, yeah. the people who followed after him. I can't remember his descendants. Descendants.、Mm -hmm. But in any case, we did talk about this、uh, blue boy painting, and in his famous art collection, Huntington hung this piece next to a painting of a girl dressed in pink, called Pinky. So, of course, if you are rich and you like to collect art. You put all your paintings in a collection. You could have a collection of all sorts of things, didn't you? Say you have a collection of pigs, pigs. or something like yes, that. Yes, I do.、Mm -hmm. uh, right. I used to have a collection of uh, uh, Buddhist uh, stupa models or something like that. I bought a bunch in、um, Burma and、uh, Thailand. I don't know what happened to it. It kind of got lost. But in any case, here this is an art collection, and he hung it next to another painting entitled. Pinky, and that was a girl dressed in pink. I've never seen that painting before, but I'm sure I can go online and find out exactly what this painting looks like. And guess what? I bet it will be a painting of a girl dressed in clothing that is pink in color. I just looked it up, and what comes up first is Pinkie Pie, a little pony, my pony character.、Oh, That's、no. not what we're talking about, though. Yeah, Pinkie was a famous painting. I think I've seen it, but I couldn't describe it right now. Later, oh yes, my mom had this picture. Oh, I love this one. Look there. Okay. So,、uh, okay. of course, I'm looking at my phone.、Uh, later, these artworks, these paintings, commonly appeared in the popular American TV show. 
Leave It to Beaver, which was about a typical American family in the 1950s, I think 50s, 60s. I was before my time, and that helped make those color stereotypes popular. Because when this TV show was on and they were filming in the home, you'd often see those two paintings, and that became familiar in people's minds. Oh, the girls in pink, the boys in blue. Okay, which would be kind of interesting because Leave It to Beaver was in black and white. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I'm kind of trying to imagine <laughs> how, how does could that they, work? How could they t- depict <laughs> blue and pink in a black and white TV show?、Yeah. Leave It to Beaver. Maybe you've seen reruns of it here. With a Beaver and his、uh, brother, what was his brother named Wally and Ward Cleaver and the mother, etc., etc. It, it was seemed the, nice. Yeah. yeah, it was a nice,、uh, wholesome American family. Well, recently, researchers have found that more and more men are wearing pink. That's what researchers have found out, and I've noticed that even here in Taiwan, if you're riding the bus or riding on the MRT, especially during the summer months, you will often see men. Wearing pink, and they're not ashamed to wear pink at all. In the past, if you were a man and you wearing pink, you were probably going to be suspected of being homosexual or something like that, or maybe being slightly effeminate or something like that. It was probably something you artistic, you know. <laughs>、uh, yes, could be artsy or whatever.、Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, for myself, when I wear pink, I like to wear dark pink, a darker shade of pink, maybe something closer to magenta or something like that, or fuchsia. Uh, those are kind of darker shades of pink, but in any case, here it's becoming more and more acceptable for men、Fuchsia. to wear pink.、Yeah. Actually, the、uh, yeah, the case for my e-reader here is pink. That's not because I like pink. But because that's the only color they sold at Daiso. Oh, really? <laughs> and, well, they had pink or black, and I decided to get pink because it's easier to see、mm. if I'm looking for it in the morning and I need to get out the door. Pink is an easy color to see. But again, as it says here, researchers have done some research and they found that more and more men are wearing pink, and I suppose likewise, more and more women are wearing blue. But as you said, women have been pretty much wearing any color. They've wanted to for many, many decades. That's because we care about fashion. Generally, we care about fashion more than guys. So one reason that researchers have found that more and more men are wearing pink was that the younger generation simply doesn't have some of the prejudices about certain colors that maybe fathers and grandfathers do. My dad wouldn't be caught dead in pink, but my brothers know they look handsome in pink. So I have three brothers. Two of them wore, wear will wear pink. One of them won't because he's more like my dad. So if you have a prejudice, guys, it means you have some sort of dislike or maybe hostility towards a certain group. It's an opinion that you form that's usually not based on reason or actual experience. So a lot of people will have prejudices about people or groups until they get to know them better, and then they realize, oh. No, I'm wrong. I was wrong about that. So the younger generation just doesn't think that they should、uh, stop themselves from wearing pink because it looks very attractive. Uh, right, so they don't have these prejudices. Of course, that's from the older generation, and the younger generation thinks, "What the heck? We can wear pink. People won't think we're." We're a feminine or something like that. If we wear pink, pink can actually be quite a masculine color, just like blue or black or brown or whatever. And of course,、uh, fathers and grandfathers might still have these prejudices or these stereotypes about colors. This, at least, is according to an academic, a researcher, somebody who works in a university by the name of Joe Pauletti.、Mm. Now, this modern attitude reflects the belief that a color is just that—a hue, rather than a gender statement. So, this is the modern attitude, and it reflects this belief.、Uh, usually, to reflect means that light bounces off something. Like、uh, colors, or like sunlight reflects off of things, etc., etc. Like water, yeah. And or your image reflects in a mirror, so you can、okay. see your reflection in the mirror. 
but this just basically indicates the belief that a color is just that. It's just a color. A color is a color. It shouldn't have to mean anything. We're also using the word hue here,、uh -huh. which is、uh, basically the same meaning as a color. We've also got the word shade. Shade and hue are similar, right? So you have blue, but you have different shades of blue or different hues. It could be a light blue, a dark blue, medium blue. Yeah. So hue and shade are very similar. Indeed. So yes, for hues of green, for example, you've got、uh, you know military green, grass Kelly green, green grass、yeah. green, etc. There are different hues or different shades, etc. But hue can also simply indicate a color. So a color is just a color. It's a hue, and it's not a gender statement. Nowadays, it's more acceptable for guys to wear pink. And for girls to wear blue or purple or red or whatever color they please, yeah, because they have a better fashion sense. Okay, that brings us to the end of our discussion for today. Here comes our Chinese teacher who just happens to be wearing pink today. 接着我们来看到第五个空格的句子 In his famous art collection, Huntington hung this piece next to a painting of a girl dressed in pink. Blank five, Pinky. 其实呢，前面有一幅画作叫做《The Blue Boy》，蓝衣少年。这幅画卖给了这个百万富翁之后呢，就众所周知。然后这个百万富翁就把这幅画。挂在呢这个穿着粉红色衣服少女的画作旁边，而这幅画作呢，在这里第五空格被称作 Pinky， 搭配文艺。第五题也考考同学们文法的概念，我们选择 B 选项 Called， 其实它是从 Which was called Pinky 变过来的。接着来看到第六个空格的句子。One reason for this is that the younger blank six simply doesn't have some of the prejudices about certain colors that perhaps the fathers and grandfathers do. 其中一个呢，理由是年轻的怎么样？可能呢，跟他们父执辈以及祖父执辈对于某些色彩有部分的偏见呢，其实并不像他们这样子有这样子的 prejudices。当然，指的就是年轻的一代，相较于他们父亲或祖父执辈。第六题 ，A 选项 generation 世代 ，B perfection 完美。C explanation 解释 ，D frustration 挫折，在这里比较的是世代之间的差异。第六题的标准答案就选择 A generation。第七个空格 ，This modern attitude reflects the belief that a color is just that, a hue blank seven, a gender statement. 其实呢，现代的这种态度反映出来的看法就是 ，a hue 这个颜色啊，就是颜色一种色彩，而怎么样 ，a gender statement。gender 指的是性别，那么颜色就是颜色，它不是一种性别的表述方式。所以第七题 ，A such as， 例如 ；B according to， 根据 ；C rather than， 而不是 ；D。Ever since, 自从搭配文艺，正确的选项我们就选择 C rather than. Okay, 以上就是今天的课文讲解。谢谢收听。Okay, everybody. That brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Thank you so much for joining us. And I bet after listening to today's program, you're going to wear pink tomorrow. What do you bet? Okay,、oh, yeah. that brings us to the end of our program. Thank you for joining us. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. See、Goodbye. ya.